The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will well, good morning and um, welcome to Worship with the Butnell Team Ministry um, this Sunday morning. It's really good to be with you, it really is. Uh, I'm Rev Malk, I'm the vicar down at St. John's and um, yeah, we've got a, a great service lined up. It's it's actually, it's the um, fourth Sunday of Easter, we're still in that Easter period as we still meditate on and just remember what the Lord Jesus did for us. Got a great service lined up, we've got Rev Dave who's going to be um, preaching for us later. We're going to sing and worship together and um, yeah, and also... We're going to, of course, pray together. So before we start, let me just pray the collect for this, for this fourth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All creation gives you praise. You alone are truly great. You alone are God who Well, we're going to worship our awesome God together now. So, um, yeah, please do enjoy this, I pray. Come set your rule and reign In our hearts again Increase in us, we pray Unveil why we're made Come set our hearts ablaze With hope like wildfire in our very souls Holy Spirit church we need your power in us we seek your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst refuse to waste our lives for you are our joy and prize to see the captive hearts released the hurt the sick the poor
are your church, we are the home on earth. Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand, heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire, win this nation back. Change the atmosphere, build your kingdom. So we're going to hear now God's word read and this morning we've got readings from Acts chapter 9 and our gospel reading is from John chapter 10. This morning's reading is taken from Acts 9, 36 to the end. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At the time she became ill and died. Then they washed her and laid her in an upstairs room. Since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two, two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. When they arrived, they took him uh, to the room upstairs. All the win widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them aside and he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling to the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, the Tanner. This is the word of the Lord. John 10, verses 22 to 30. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Sol Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my father's name testify to me but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear, your vo hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Dave is now going to preach for us. Um, Dave Street, uh, the rector of the Butnell Team Ministry, is going to preach for us. Let me just pray for Dave before he speaks to us, and for us, of course. 
So, Father God, we do praise you, Lord, and we love you so much, Father. And I just want to give thanks, Lord, for, for what you put on Dave's heart to share with us um, this morning. So be with Dave, I pray, but also I do pray for us. I pray, Lord, that you soften our hearts and open our minds, Lord, to what it is you want us to hear, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your living words, and I thank you, Lord, for Dave. Speak through him, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's great to be with you today. Over the last three weeks, we've had some of the most exciting and enthralling moments in the life of the disciples. Think about it, we've had the post-resurrection appearances to the disciples, Thomas feeling left out and needing to see for himself. Midweek, we've had the journey on the road to Emmaus, and Cleopas's heart burning as Jesus spoke with him. And then last week, Simon Peter and the disciples were trying to go back to their old way of life, back to fishing. But it was empty for them, just as their nets were. And then they encountered the risen Jesus and Simon Peter was recommissioned by him, as Jesus says, go and feed my sheep. Now in our Acts reading, we've got Saul on the road to Damascus to persecute the followers of the way. He was then totally transformed after an encounter with Jesus. And then today in our Acts reading, Peter steps into the big leagues. No longer is he a disillusioned fisherman. He's now filled with the Holy Spirit and raising someone from the dead. Not bad. Peter is quite literally doing the things that Jesus did, which was, of course, Jesus's commission to him. The Gospel writer John is continuing this theme of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. It's just that the location has now moved. Now it's at Solomon's portico in, in the eastern part of the temple, which provided some cover during the winter. If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly, they ask. It strikes me that nothing's changed. Does the question still stand? If we are the body of Christ, if we are the church, does the world shout, tell us, tell us plainly, communicate that good news to us in a way that we can understand. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, says Jesus. And for John, Jesus' works are always a sign that point to God and to who Jesus is. By what I do, you should know who I am says Jesus. It's the same teaching that we read in Matthew 7 about a good tree bringing forth good fruit. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. So today John goes on in verse 27 to not just be hearers of his word, but then doers of his word. In other words, if we listen to Jesus' word, not our heads, and then just carry on the same, then we know what Jesus had to say elsewhere. He says, basically, you're building on quicksand. Be a listener and then a doer of his word. And that's compared, of course, to building your life on a rock. Again, the input of Jesus' words should cause transformed output from our lives as we are hearers and doers. Of course, don't get me wrong, absolutely, for it's by grace that we've been saved through faith. It's the gift of God. It's not because of anything that we've done, but of what Christ has done for us. And while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, Romans tell us. But we should expect that if we are hearers of Jesus' word, and according to John, if we are believers in his word, then our lives should demonstrate that. We should be different. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go and please keep warm and be well fed, but does nothing about their needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. So according to Jesus, and then of course according to the New Testament writers, hearing his voice and following Jesus 
encountering him should result in a transformed life. So John goes on in verse 28. I will give them eternal life and they will never perish, says Jesus. And of course, for John, eternal life isn't just a promise for the hereafter. It's everlasting life. It's abundant life, overflowing life in all its fullness now. So following the resurrected Jesus should result in life in all its fullness for me and for you. Now, this is not going to be easy. Because whenever Jesus talks about being one of his flock, and when he talks about a sheep, of course, there's often a wolf not too far away. But Jesus says, no one will snatch them out of my hand. And of course, if you've watched David Attenborough or the like, if you've seen wolves as they, as they hunt, they hunt usually stalking, waiting, waiting for the right time. And they're looking for the sheep that's a bit isolated, the one that's a bit struggling or, or, or weaker than the rest. It's all about timing when the sheep is at its most vulnerable. And that brings us on to our psalm that's set for today, which is Psalm 23rd, of course, written by the most famous shepherd in Scripture, by the man who became King David himself, Psalm 23. We have these wonderful words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside the still waters. He shall restore my soul. But where is David when he's writing this? Of course, he's walking through the darkest valley. He's in need of restoration. He's not worshipping God because he woke up in the morning and the sky is blue and the sun is out. He's worshipping God because he's a doer of God's word. And praying and worshipping him is what God's people do. And as we read on the 23rd Psalm, where is this party, this banquet, this table of provision that God has prepared for him? In the presence of my enemies, it reads. Or in Psalm 86, in the day of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Do you know, if we're waiting for that problem to get sorted, if we're waiting for that health issue to be resolved for tomorrow to come so that we feel that we're in a better place with Jesus, we might just be missing the opportunity to know his provision in the presence of our enemies, in the presence of the things that trouble us, in the day of our trouble, today. So as Jesus' flock, how do we learn to hear his voice, to be doers of his word, to know his direction, in our lives, our choices, our attitudes, our words, at all times, when we're up, when we're down, to follow him. Well, they were pushing Jesus to establish his identity in our gospel reading. Who are you? Are you the Messiah? And Jesus' reply was, well, look at my life, my works, my deeds. Who does it point to? And as we follow Jesus, there's a question. Who does our life, our works, our deeds point to, make it personal. Is your life a signpost to Jesus, just as his was a signpost to his Father in heaven? By your works, by your deeds, by your attitude, by your choices, by your words, your prayer life, your heart of worship, do people see Jesus? Of course, the majority if our neighbours, scripture says, are like sheep without a shepherd. They've been picked off by the enemy when they're most vulnerable. So who is going to signpost them to Jesus? Who will people learn from that there is a God who knows and understands and accepts, that loves them and wants them to be part of his flock? Who will not only speak good news but be good news to people who are lost and people who are without hope and in need of a good shepherd. I'll finish in Acts. Now Simon Peter was in a place called Lydda 
and he'd just seen a man called Aeneas healed. Joppa wasn't too far away. And so some of the disciples sent a message to him to go and join them. And when he arrived, he was shown all the good things that Tabitha had made. So devoted was she to good works and to acts of charity. Well, who did Simon Peter think he was? To go and pray for a dead girl and expect something to happen. Well, by his response, he demonstrated his identity just as Jesus told the Pharisees. He knew that he was Simon Peter, the fisherman from Galilee, but he also knew that he was in Christ Jesus and operating in his name, fueled by the Holy Spirit. So anything is possible. God in our day, may the penny drop for us what it means to be followers of the resurrected Jesus, to be carriers of his identity and his name. God made the penny drop for us that we are in Christ, that the Holy Spirit is at work in and through us. And may we live as signposts to Jesus. May we rise up in our identity, do the things that Jesus did, that by our works, the community where I live, where you live, might know Jesus, the healer, the rescuer, the restorer. Forgive us, Lord, for settling for, for lifeless religion and mediocre churchianity. Remind us that we're called to be a missional outpost to seek and save the lost, not a rest home for the already saved. So today, may God bless you. May you know and encounter afresh the risen Lord Jesus in your life. May you be transformed and recommissioned to do as Simon Peter did, as he carried on and did the works of Jesus. And may all the glory go to him as we point people in his name. Amen. Well, Dave, thank you uh, for your word. Really appreciate that, brother. Thank you so much. Can I just say, uh, it's so good, isn't it, to get together. We've been now in this period, haven't we, uh, over this COVID, where uh, two years, over two years now, where we've been doing this digital worship. And and I know, okay, perhaps it's not as, it's certainly not as good as being in church and mixing with church family, but we can still be connected, can't we? Um, we still come together as the body of Christ. We still worship God together. And, and hasn't that been a, a real blessing? So now I'm going to lead us in prayer, if that's okay. And um, I'll say a prayer and then we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. So Father God, we do praise you, Lord, and we just love you so much, Father. And Lord, I just want to give thanks, Lord, for each one of us, every one of us, Lord, who is here today, Lord, worshipping you, Father. Lord, thank you, Father, that because of the Lord Jesus and what he achieved for us at Easter, we can, Lord, come to you and we can call you Father. Jesus is our brother, Lord, and we know for certain that you hear our prayers. So, Father, I just want to pray, Lord, for all those people who are struggling at this time, those who are perhaps going through um, problems with their health, whether that's physical or mental, and um, people, Lord, who are just struggling with life in general, with the cost of living at the moment and the worry that that brings. Lord, we just pray for those people. And, Lord, uh, I also want to give thanks to the Lord for for your love for us. Uh, I give thanks for all those people, Lord, who are um, saving you, Lord, in different ways. And Lord, actually, as I'm sat here now and just watching little Millie running around the garden with our two gods, um, dogs, um, I give thanks, Lord, for, for the children. Lord, be with them and protect them, I pray, Father. And thinking about children, Lord, I wanna pray for our schools. I thank you for the close connection that we have with our schools here in this parish. Lord, thank you um, for the privilege of being able to go and share about the Lord Jesus with our young people. And Lord, I do thank you um, for Millie who's sat here now, Lord. Millie is a little miracle who is recovering and doing so well at the moment. So Lord, be with her, I pray, as she just walks around in the background here and playing with, with our dogs. Lord, thank you for it. Um, Lord, we praise you and we love you. And Lord, we wanna pray, Lord, as well for our community, wherever we find ourselves today, Lord, we pray for our local community. And I pray, Father, that us, Lord, as the body of Christ, as your followers, as people who love you, Lord, that you help us, Lord, to go and bring hope and light 
and peace, Lord, into our communities. Lord, you love us. And Lord, help us, Lord, to share that love with those who we come into contact with. Help us, Lord, to be image bearers of God. Lord, please, I pray for these things. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Um, let's say the words of the Lord's Prayer together um, this morning to, to end our prayers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed um, worship with us this morning. It's been great to be with you. It's been a real privilege to, to lead um, this um, service this morning. So God bless you. Have a fantastic weekend. Have a great um, end to your Sunday and, and have a great week next week. And um, yeah, just lovely spending time with you. So let me say a blessing and, um, and then I'll let you go in peace. So Father, thank you, Lord, that you love us and thank you for this time together and the blessing that we've been, Lord, to one another, Lord, encountering you, I pray, in a very, very profound way this morning. So Father, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all and remain with us always. Amen. Guys, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless, guys. Take care. Bye. For your endless love.